I liked it and I was decent at it, but it was very good because whenever I call somebody, I had to make somebody like me. They start off by cursing me out and I had, I had to mitigate the situation and be able to sell them something. So it, it was very hard and it was not a pleasant That's, experience yeah, in terms you know, of- like my finish line usually is, give me a chance. It, doesn't, it won't take more than 20 minutes. I'll show you everything I do. And if you like what I do, we can do business together. If not, I'll walk away. You don't have to sign anything. Everything's for free. I'll show you everything. You can just have something to compare. You cancel me anytime. If you don't like how I work, you can fire me anytime. I stole your line about you can fire me anytime. Yeah, yeah. it's a good one. It's a good one because it, it leaves the door open. Everybody's yeah. worried about signing agreement for a year. We're going to be talking today about something that every real estate agent hates. And it's cold calling. And today with me, I got Halib. Halib has been a little over one month in the business. Yes, sir. And he's having a lot of success. And so, so I brought him in the, our podcast room today to uncover what is it that you're doing, how you do it, and everything like that. So, Halib, uh, how long have you been in business? Uh, yeah, so just like you said, I've been in the business for a little bit over than one month now. I'm yeah. just trying to figure out the game. Cold calling is primarily the main source for generating business. Yes, sir. I figured I would just pick something that I'm kind of good at and I'll try to stick to it and try to figure out the way how to, you know, do some business for me in that area. So, But how did you, like, for example, how do you find that cold calling could be something that you could be good at? How do you know? Like, do you have any, like, sales experience? Yeah, I've had some sales exp experience. I think I started off, it was my first kind of official job when I was 17 years old. I, I was hired at a, a office in Kiev. Ukraine, that's where I'm from. And um, so I learned sales there. I had a great mentor and a team leader. It's an well, Armenian guy. You were in the office making cold calls? Yes, sir. All day long? Yes, sir. Yeah. I had a task to make like 200, over 200, 200 calls per day. Did you like it? Um, to me, it's like kind of like an art, like talking to people and getting, sure. them open up to, uh, getting them open up to you. And so I kind of liked it. But obviously, the sa my very first experience in sales was not very pleasant because there were a lot of rude people. The audience that what we were, were you selling? Um, I was selling, our company was a, a financial advisor, so we pretty much were selling uh, fin financial services to people. Like a wolf of uh, Wall Street? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> like stocks? Yes, sir. That don't exist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, all right, all right. So financial services, uh-huh. Were you good in the beginning or you had to learn? Were you Honestly, uh, as soon as I started off, there were a lot of people and um, uh, I knew that I was good because when I started, there was like a huge number of people that were getting hired and like fired in the next couple of days. Like, because they didn't, w w they weren't good. They weren't doing any progress. They weren't doing anything. They were yeah. shy on the phone. They weren't able to speak clearly. They weren't able to communicate with people, and they were just getting fired. Like, so left like right. management would hire, fire, hire, yeah. fire. Yeah, yes, all the time, rotating door. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And um, everybody was like surprised because they. I was seventeen at the time, and they were telling me. We don't believe that you've never worked in sales before, and I'm like, how? L when did you think I? When do you think I started at 13 or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like at 17 you were already good. I, I was decent, I'd say. Yeah. And they wanted to make me a uh, closer. They wanted me wanted to make me a team leader, and I was like, well, I mean, I guess if they're thinking about it, probably you know, maybe I'm. So what was it then at 17? Th were you reading some books? Were you re uh, listening to some tapes, or no? I it was, was just like naturally coming. I I would say honestly, it it all comes into play i think it was kind of natural because my dad is good at talking and i think i just got it from him but at the same time i was just inspired by all these different um movies like wolf from wall street and uh the boiler room and all yeah. this i love yeah. those movies and i was just inspired by them and i was like mm -hmm. i just love the atmosphere i love the atmosphere when everybody's you know calling this energy you know the energy yeah yeah so i was you know the fact that i liked it i think it helped me be decent in the beginning so um, you did it for a long time? No. That I type of job? I, I, I quit because I uh, only did it for like two months uh, when I was 17 because it was very, I liked it and I was decent at it, but it was very good because everybody, like whenever I call somebody, I had to make somebody like me. When I, like they start off by calling me words, like cursing me out. And yeah. I, have, I had to mitigate the situation and be able to sell them something. So it, it was very hard and it was not a pleasant, pleasant. experience. Yeah, in terms you didn't of like yeah, yeah. the whole process. I yeah. didn't like it. So how did real estate came about? Um, I think when I was also like 17, I was reading reading different books, and one of them is uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, think whenever real estate was mentioned on there, I was just I would just think to myself, it'd be cool to move to the United States and sell real estate here. So uh -huh. here I am, <laughs> trying to sell real estate in the United States. So you f right away you knew that it's going to be cold calling. Yes, sir. Yeah, you knew that I'm going to be. I have to get in front of the sellers, or buyers, and that's the contact sport. This real estate is a contact sport. Yes. Whoever gets in front of, because you know a lot of people. Let me do um, a post. Let me go downtown the city, take a picture, write a script about it, which everything is great. You know, it's building it's building your brand to get the business today. You need to get in front of people. Who do you usually call? I call for sale by owners only uh, right now. Yes, I try to call absentee owners. I also sometimes call expires, but my I primarily I focus on uh, for sale by owners. What did you found in absentees that you didn't like? Why don't well, you like pick that one as the number one? Uh, because for sell by owners, in my opinion, are just kind of easier to find a, the right key to. Because absentee owners, you just have to you have to give them more time to kind of yeah. get ready to have that conversation. It's a different game. It's yes. you have to stay in touch with them for a long time. Yes, sir. It's a long follow up because like absentee owners, they always sort of for sale. Because I mean, not always. It depends, but the, the right price will make them sell. They don't live there. Uh, but also sometimes it's going to be happening in two years or a year. And then here you call today. So you have to stay in touch for a year or two. Yes. They're all over the pipeline. So, yeah, I get it. But, you know, um, if you call a lot every day, then you'll bump into somebody who wants to do a deal today. Right. And you will build up the pipeline for next year and years from now. Right. You know, but you decide, you know, let me go. Let me focus on the now business, which yeah. is like. You know, the fi uh, FISBO is like fastest source of business opportunity. You know, that's yes what they sir. call it. Yeah. And um, I mean, I started off by doing FISBOs because I just started in this business and I just need that. Well, I know that I can do it, but I also need this ad adrenal adrenaline brush and kind of feeling that I can do it. And by yeah. getting listings or at least appointments, I, I can understand that I'm, I can yeah. do it. Yeah. So, yeah. but at a little wins, little yeah. wins you're getting. Yeah. Exactly. Little steps that yeah, kind of yeah. keep me going. Well, how did you get the, the scripts and everything? Um, there's a couple of people that I watch on YouTube. I kind of use a couple of scripts and yeah. I don't really stick to a script because yeah. sometimes when you just call somebody and you try to stick to a script and like, y you're going to sound like a robot. You yeah. want to sound natural. Chameleon. You sound yeah. You got to adjust to the personality. Exactly. For sure. Yeah, so you kind of you you like you have a script in front of you in the beginning. I do. It's just I would say I have that script not for me to just read it, but for me to be able to ask the right questions at the right moment. I feel like the phrasing and uh, you being able to say the right words at the right time kind of also helps you get appointments because and th and that's what that's when script comes into play for me. Mm -hmm. So what is your goal with Facebook? What are, what is your intentions when you make a call? How do you how do you start out? Um, well, a role play. Yeah. You want to roleplay? Yeah, we can roleplay. Ring, play. ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Oleg. Yeah. Oleg, this is Lee Bama Realtor. Um, before you hang up, I was just hoping to ask you a quick question about the home for sale. Do you think that'd be okay? Uh, you're a realtor? Oh, uh, yeah. I was just curious, you know. I think the property looks great. And uh, just like I said, you're free to hang up pretty much any time. I was just curious. If I was able to bring you a buyer, you think you'd be able to work with me at this point? Yeah, bring the buyer. Um, yeah. House is great. Bring the buyer. Yeah, you have you a know, buyer. Yeah, you know, Oleg. Um, I want to be fully transparent with you. Mm -hmm. I do got buyers that are looking in the area. It's just that, in particular, at your property, I don't got anybody that's looking right now. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, just wanted to call you, see what was going on with the property. If you were able to move out, let, let me ask you this: If I brought you an offer right away, do you think you'd be able to move out right away, or do you still need some time to figure out your next move? No, I mean, if you get me a good price, if I can get a good price, I mean, I'm ready to go. Um, this house is too small for us now, so we just want to see if we can pull the money that we want to pull. Right. And if I can get that done, then um, I'm going to go, but I don't want to pay real estate commissions. Right, you right. Know? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And, you know, upsizing all like in this market right now, it could be a pretty good idea. And, uh, you know, I have no doubt that you're going to be able to sell the property on your own. You don't really need a realtor unless there's yeah. somebody who could bring you numbers that you need, right? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And I'll like, let, let me ask you this before I let you go. Um, I'm a listing agent. So the question that I usually ask people, do you think if you can't sell the property on your own, you would think potentially about listing it with somebody? Um, yeah, if I can't sell it on my own, 
maybe I'll look into it, but I, I think I have a friend who might do it for me. Right. Right. And again, I'm agreeing with you here. Why would you need somebody? You don't really know if you got a friend lined up for right. you, who's ready to do a job for you. Right. And uh, let me ask you this. Like, have you done a, a, any deals with this friend before? I'm just curious. Not me, but friends of mine have done some deals. They said he's, he's, he should be good. Um, and that's probably who I'm going to use if I decide to sell. If it doesn't sell on its own, then I'll probably, uh, you know, hire him. Right, right. I'll like it makes perfect sense. And you know, I'll just ask you this before I let you go. Um, sometimes, and uh, the way I like to think about it, and if you disagree, let me know. But uh, the way I think about it, I like to think about it is pretty much like with doctors. Sometimes you need a second opinion, don't you? I guess because you know, I, I I'm pretty sure your friend could do a great job of helping you sell a property. Obviously, if you can't sell on your own, but. Do you think it makes sense for me to reach out to you in a couple of weeks, see how everything is going? And if you have any questions for me at that point, we'll just be able to go from there. Sure. Of course, I'll like, and can you do me a favor? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, before I hang up, uh, can you send me your email address over text message? I'm driving right now. I can't really do that on my own right now, but I would appreciate it if you could send it to me and I'll just send you some information about me later. Okay. Okay, I'll look. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. Okay, talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. You're a tough, you're a tough client. <laughs> <laughs> I made it tough for you, man. I made, tough. I gave you all the hoops, but uh, uh, it was smooth. It was good. Thank right, you. Carlos? What do you think? It was good. It was Thank very you. good. Well, uh, what was your idea with, uh, with taking an email? Usually you have a problem that you wouldn't stop. <laughs> it looks yeah. like you fixed it. You you used to like keep talking, keep yes. talking, keep talking. I, I still do have that. And just like I said, you're a tough <laughs> client. I was like, should I? I mean, cause <laughs> if I just called you and you were like, yeah, I got a friend, you know, I'm going to most likely go get a list with him and you're giving me this energy. You're not interested. I, I would have yeah. probably said, OK, thank you. I'll see what I can do about finding a buyer. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm in a podcast. I got to do something. Right. So <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to make it pretty. But, um, you know, yeah, we could have kept going if you wanted to go. If you wanted to ask, like, when are you actually going to be interviewing and, you know, can I borrow the, you know, the moment from you when are you going to be doing it to take a look at what i could do if i was able to pull the money that you're looking for would you like to meet with me i can show yeah. you how i do it yeah there's a couple a couple things but it was it was smooth you know it was it was good i think i think i was opening up you know i was opening up when you were talking and um leading me i was i was listening because you were agreeing to everything i say yeah but i also tell you uh, something from my own experience i myself as a buyer I give people a lot of objections just because I want to see how they overcome. Mm -hmm. But I'm ready to do a business. It's just you have to walk through five doors or six okay. doors, and then I'm here. And okay. so a lot of times um, that's how I am as a buyer. Okay. You know? I give salespeople objections, and it crushes a lot of them. You know, it yeah. just crushes. Like, okay, got it. So, okay, have a good one. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, like they're calling for something. And some of them are so stubborn, they don't even listen to me. You know, they're just, yeah, I understand, but, and that's it. You know? It's not going to work either. Yeah, the door is already sealed. There's no more doors, and I'm not there anymore. Yeah. You know, but you were smooth. It was good, you know. I, I appreciate it. I, I mean, you're booking appointments now. I mean, you listed already a house, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Within a month of the business. Yeah. One house is listed, and I think the price, it's, it's good. It's going to sell, you know, maybe one price adjustment, and it's going to go on the contract. Um, you're going for another appointment. You got how many appointments you went to all all together? All together, well, I've booked a lot of them, but I've I've so the the one that uh, the listing that I got was my fifth appointment, and then after that I'm going. So this Saturday I'm going on one, and I would have booked more, but I was just super busy this uh, this week. But I try to book. Uh, at this point, I try to book appointments that I know would lead actually lead to something. Because mm -hmm. for example, this guy that I'm going on an appointment tomorrow. Uh, what he did, he texted me a um, text message. He was like, uh, thank you for your persistence. I hope you can deliver. Uh, the, key to the, the key to the house is this. I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, when we were on the phone, he told me himself that, okay, so I understand if we agree on something tomorrow, I'm going to have to sign something. And I'm like, and I, I kind of have to like, um, I, I don't, I don't want to be pushy. So I say, yeah, if it comes down to that, I'll bring an agreement you know, tomorrow with me. And if we discuss everything and if I see that I can do a job for you, mm -hmm. we'll sign it. So I try to make sure that appointments that I book at this point are is actually something that could lead the me listing to, appointment. Yes. You see, when I was calling for sale by owners, I had most of the times I had approach of preview. 
you know, I'm going to stop by. That was in the beginning. Later a little bit, um, I was calling for a listing appointment like you did. Right. Because I didn't feel like driving much. Because previews, you go in a lot of appointments and, you know, you're seeing houses, but there's no guarantee. They're, they don't give you much time to present what you do f to sell the house. It's just you're getting face to face. Right. So I was doing a lot of that in the beginning and it worked. So I would, I would come in, do a preview, talk to to the owner, build some relationship, give them my material, leave. And a lot of times they'll call me I'm ready to list mm -hmm. or I'll just stay in touch and try to tell them, hey, what if I was able to help you? Let me show you. Yeah. And then I book a listing appointment. But first I had a preview. That was a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Right. It's a lot of driving and a lot of times you're going, but. I mean, I don't even know why I'm going. What's the reason for, for going, you know? Right. So I ha I did that, but, I mean, that also, that works, too. So it depends on, I guess, on the strategy. I try to use different approaches, and I, I also use your approach. It's just that, I, I guess, my experience, I'm a little stubborn in terms, like, my experience. What I was taught when I was 17, I wor worked on very aggressive sales. So right now I'm just trying to kind of learn how to communicate with people more rather than actually make them buy something. Because, um, for example, my I've seen, I haven't done it, m me myself I haven't done it, but I've seen people in our office uh, when I worked in Kiev, I've seen them tell to people, hey, I know you're driving right now. We got a deal coming up right now. I need you to pull over right now and send me, you know, send me your information to and people do it. Like, if you have a right approach to it, people would do it. But it's very aggressive, and it's not the type of sales you want to do because... I don't see myself doing that. Me neither. It's very... I can do it physically, I think. But uh, I don't think it's the right thing to do. You're going to be hated by people. Yeah, you want to enjoy what you do, too. Yeah. You know, you want to enjoy. So when... I remember um, we had... Um, we still have them, but we kind of don't do that as often. On Mondays, we have cold call sessions. And then on the w very first or second, maybe call call session, I'm making a call and uh, I booked a uh, for sale by owner appointment. I end up listing and then she referred me to her brother. I enlisted the brother, sold both. And when I had a listing appointment with her, she told me, thank you so much for calling me. It was like, thank you very much. You don't know how many people called me. I didn't want to sign with anybody, but you I, w I wanted to go with. And, you know, like that feedback when somebody says, thank you for saving me. Exactly. You know, because I couldn't sell and I listed for the same price. Of course, we landed an offer. We closed full ask. Um, and it was like November. And I think it was overpriced a little bit. Okay. But still, we got, the, we got the thing done. That's awesome. But, you know, like a lot of agents are thinking, oh, I'm going to be bothering these people. They don't want to be bothered. A lot of people, and you probably found that, they are selling on their own because they, s for now, they don't have an agent. Yeah. Or they have a lot of agents. Yeah. So they don't know who to choose. They also don't want to waste time thinking about who cho who to choose. Right. And they just gonna let me throw it over there and see what happens. Right. And so that's when they get bombarded, and then they start filtering, and then they see that it's not working. Now I have to have the agent. Some of them will still sell out of the open house or whatever, but. I, I don't know what the statistic is, but I think like 85 to 90 percent of those who try them on the uh, for sell themselves, they end up hiring somebody. Yes. So, I mean, you being in front of them gives you some chance. Exactly. You probably called everybody who's in our market. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of agents who tell me that, oh, you know, I'll call this client, but they told me somebody from our company already called me. <laughs> uh, it was probably you. And I'm like, yeah, it was probably me, <laughs> actually. But um. I mean, it's just what I do. Um, do you see yourself doing that for a long time? Uh, what I see myself doing is I see myself getting a huge database based of the, uh, off of these people. I mm -hmm. see myself becoming a top listing agent in the future. And then after that, I'm going to be building my business just by clientele that I've serviced uh, throughout the s a period of time. This you being in the room for eight hours? That won't happen in a couple of months. You, you're going to see that shrinking because you're going to be busy servicing what you already uh, listed. And then you're going to start getting buyer calls. You're going to take some buyers because, I mean, why not? Yeah. You know, it's also money and, and helping people. And then those buyers will be listings too. But in the beginning, that's a good way because you're going to build up your database. And now if you do a good job, if you properly work the database, you're going to get them back and everything is going to be... Um, and then you you might not even have to make a single call call anymore. Yeah. 
unless you like you see something across the street, seven hundred thousand, you got the skills, make a call list. Why exactly. not? You know, I got the skills. Yeah. But it goes away. Like for somebody who's listening, I'm like, I hate calling this and that. Um, did you have any like fears in the beginning? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I don't get anxious anxious anymore. But um <laughs> it's like kind of like a feeling of being an imposter. Like you call somebody who's not waiting for your call. That makes you afraid of calling people. But in reality, and I have a comparison that it's uh, kind of similar to police officers or doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, police officers or doctors. Um, have you ever had a bad experience with a police officer or a doctor? Yeah, I can remember one with the doctor. Yeah, exactly. It, me too. Because so when I was young, I was diagnosed with something and I had a doctor who told me that I needed surgery, ASAP, a lot of money and stuff like that. Yeah. And then after that, a couple of months, my parents found uh, a couple of months after that, they found a good doctor who told me we don't actually need to do that and waste that amount of money. And what that lead me to believing is that there are good people and there are bad people. And pretty much there are bad doctors and there's a lot of people who have bad experience with doctors and they don't, don't like doctors. Right. But when doctors go to work, they don't think yet, you know, that, Oh, people don't like me. So I'm not going to go there and I'm not going to help people anymore or police officers. Same thing. So pretty much when you're a real estate agent, you got to understand that there's going to be people who don't like you. And there's going to be people that are going to thank you for your job. Yeah. And, you just ha gotta have that approach. You shouldn't be scared. You just call people to find out if they need your help, and if they do, great, you're there for them. Yeah, that's the way I think about it. That's that's why I'm not scared to call. It's anymore. all about mindset, you know. Exactly, it's a lot about mindset. Because when when the phone rings, there's a lot of that. I'm scared, and you got lots of thoughts going on. Your head, your your, your brains want to stop the phone, but then once somebody picks up the phone, I mean, it just kind of like goes away. Now it's you just talking, and it, and then. You finish the phone call, the next one, sometimes also, like, it's hard to pull off. It's hard to make that call, you know. But when I noticed one thing. I had that session on, on one of the Fridays here when I was making cold calls to for sale by owners. And for, for an hour, I was rusty, you know. Right. For me, always, I have to warm up. I have to have a couple conversations. They lead to nothing. And then a um, couple other ones are so-so. And then, and then within an hour, I feel like, okay, I'm in my zone now. Exactly. I can book. I think I can book. And now I'm pulling questions and, okay, let's go, you know? Yeah. And then, boom, I booked the, booked the guy and then I had to go on vacation and nothing happened with that because I had to leave. But yeah, I still stayed in touch, And but he already listed. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, for me, it takes it takes time. So whenever, if somebody's making calls, like making two, three calls, it's not going to get you nowhere. It's like, no. make, it's like doing two or three push-ups, right. you know? It's a they numbers game. You got to do more. Yeah, you got to do a lot because at th at a certain level, it starts it starts to work, and you're in in a in a mood in a state of of you know of, of being on your on on a um, at your best. Exactly. You know? it, it it usually takes me like one good conversation when I either either book an appointment or get a good lead that I feel I'm gonna convert into something in the future and it gets me going I get hyped up and I just I usually stand up and I start calling people to kind of get my lungs going and yeah. all that stuff so yeah it, it you need that push and in order to get that push you need to make calls because there's people who get uh um frustrated you know, after a couple of calls yeah that's you have to keep pushing you have to keep going and um it's all about the mindset and a lot of people think that I have to have a script and I have to learn the script before I start making calls that's also like it's hard because then when are you going to learn the script? The learn the script takes 10 minutes. Okay, you have the script, 10 minutes, you can download one for free on Google. You learn you know, it by doing it. By yeah, you have to practicing. do it. You have to start. Because once you learn the script, the phone rings, you forgot the script yeah. right away. Somebody, hello, boom, you forgot the script right there. You know? Exactly. Now you have to, you're going to remember the situations. You're going to remember what people tell you. Exactly. Your brain's going to register, remember, and store it. And then you're going to finish the conversation. You're going to process it. Like, what should I have said? And you're going to learn. You're going to listen to podcasts. You're going to maybe read a bunch of material. Then you're going to, oh, this one, uh, this is a good line. This is a good line. And then, boom, you do it again. And then, oh, this is uh, something new. What should I say here? But then your brain's going to remember. When you're just reading it on a paper, it's it's just on a paper. It's not, brain is not registering. And then as soon as somebody picks up the phone, you forget everything. Exactly. But with experience, whatever somebody says, there's not that many things that people say. Bring me the buyer. Do you have a buyer? I don't pay commission. I have somebody who's who's going to be selling in my family. Um, what else they say? I'm not interested in listing. 
And mm. that's pretty much it. Those are the five things. Yeah, there's a whole bu- bunch of things they say, and you could counter pretty much all of them. It, it, it's not really hard. You just have to practice. Yeah. Because, yeah. It's, it, I already it, picked the agent. That's that's one. I already have an agent lined up. Uh, no, no problem. I mean, you could, you, could, you could ask them if they tell you, the, you they already got an agent. You can tell them, oh, okay, great. And is that a family friend or somebody you've worked with before? And uh, when they tell you yes, you would be, I say, listen, I'm not here to sell you anything or waste anybody's time. I just want to ask you this. You obviously got somebody you would work with if you, w- if you were to list it. Do you think it makes sense for me to follow up with you in a couple of weeks? And sometimes they say, yeah, please do. Or sometimes they just say, you know, I don't want to waste your time. Don't call me anymore. And, uh, at that point, it's just up to me whether or not I want to call them again or just forget about them. My finish line usually is, you know, give me a chance. It doesn't. It won't take more than 20 minutes. I'll show you everything I do. And if you like what I do and if you like who I am, we can do business together. If not, I'll walk away. You don't have to sign anything. Everything's for free. I'll show you everything. You can just have something to compare. And if you like what I do, here's what I can do. My commi- My agreement is only three weeks. Or months, or two weeks, whatever. I'm flexible. You can cancel me any time, and I'll give you back all my material. And if you don't like how I work, you can fire me anytime. That's good. That's that's my stuff. That's you know? good, and it works. I stole your line about uh, you can fire me anytime. Yeah, I, it's a good one. It's a good one because it, it leaves the door open. Everybody's yeah. worried about signing agreement for a year. You know what am right. I gonna do? You're gonna disappear. You're gonna take my house for a year. Put it on MLS. Not open, no, not answer the phone. You know, I can't cancel you. Right. My house. Right. You know, I have plans. So if you, d- you know, you drop that, I'm like, hmm. all right. Yeah. You sound like you're confident. You sound like you know you what you're doing. No risk. I can get my pictures for free. Exactly. All right. Let's go. Yeah. It works. I mean, yeah, if you put it like that, if you just explain it, uh, most important thing is uh, for, I feel like for an agent. But it's risky. What if you get a listing and the seller cancels you in two weeks? You wasted money for pictures. Yeah. But you got a listing. You're going to blast it out all over the social media. You're going to jump around and you're going to show that you have a listing. You're going to put the for sale sign. You're going to get buyer calls. You're going to have something. You're going to do an open house. You're going to have brochures. Neighbors will come. You meet neighbors. Right. You get You get traction now. I mean, you get some. I mean, it's a business. It's not like you d- get results and get get a paycheck every week, right? You have to l- learn your way into understanding how everything works. And but this line of two weeks works because of the market. Yeah. Right now, you need one day to sell a house right. if the price is right. But also, a lot of people will, if they like how you work and if you do a good job, they'll say, "Okay, I know two weeks ex- is ending today. We need to do something about our contract. Extend it." Yeah. Or if they say cancel, then you got to cancel. Yeah. I mean, there's... At least you had something. Yeah, there's some things that you can't control, right? So... I mean, if somebody's listening, like, 20 years in the business, they're listing million-dollar properties left and right. I mean, they're not going to... First of all, nobody's probably listening to this, but (laughs) they're not going to do a two-week list. But if you're starting out, it's your first listing that you're trying to book, do a short-term listing. I mean, no cancellation fee. I mean, cancel any time. There's no fee. Here's all my pictures for you. I sign off that I have no, I give you all the rights to the pictures. Yeah. Use it. I mean, I feel like they usually ask themselves, like, that they ask you, can we, like, w- for example, I signed a listing for one month and they ask me themselves, can we prolong it after, w- like, if, if, it, if we don't sell within one month, can we extend it? I was like, I, I don't think we'll need it, but we can definitely. So they're, they're going to ask you, if, y- if they like you, they're going to ask you if they can, uh, you know, make it longer. Uh, but, um, you haven't had it yet, but you will have sellers cancel your listing too. Yeah, I mean, that I'm one, ready for that it. one hurts a little bit. Yeah, I'm little ready bit. for sometimes that heartbreak, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes uh, uh, it's just part of a game. You just have to. You have to have to remember that this will be happening, um, for a reason or for no reason. Sometimes it's unreasonable reason. You know, it's like, yeah. like, come on, I'm doing all my best, and you know that I've been working hard, and you just fire me because you don't want to listen to my advice. And then they take somebody else, they drop the price on themselves. Yeah. And you did all the work. You showed all the feedback. You did everything. Next guy comes in, drops the price, sells. And that will happen to you. It happened to me. But it also happens in reverse. Mm-hmm. Somebody did a lot of work. And then now uh, they don't want to work with them. They come to you. You kind of work them on the price. And then it sells. Yeah. You know. Sometimes it's good to be a third realtor. Sometimes. Not the first one. 
Okay. Because there's a lot of, sometimes there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I just listed three houses, all overpriced, all needs to be worked. Mm -hmm. uh, all don't really care about uh, if it sells or not, you know, so there's not very much motivation. I think two out of three will sell. One will end up renting, you know, that's fine. I got the for sale sign. The one I just posted that doesn't want to drop at all. He's for sure going to, he's for sure going to close. I'm getting buyer calls nonstop. People drive by and call, hey, this house, hey, this house, this house. Buyer calls nonstop. That's a, that's a nice advertisement for free. You get paid to advertise yeah. on somebody's front yard. How, how good is that? It's great. <coughs> Listings is where everything's at, you know? Yeah. You can make also a lot of money with buyers too. You can. Um, but you have more leverage with listings. That's what I was thinking. You have more time for yourself. I think it gives you more con conf not confidence, but I mean, I got I got an agreement signed. Yes, they can break it anytime, but at least it gives them understanding that yeah, we're under contract. It's official. We're working, and I know that we got a contract. You know, it just makes it more. Once you post it, it's kind of nobody else can post it. Yeah, you know, it's kind of everything flows to you. So, um, but you just have to remember also, like since you're in the beginning stages in your first year in the business, that uh, buyers will become sellers with some time. In a couple of years, they will start selling, upgrading. And when those buyers sell, they also buy. So you have, sometimes when you have one buyer, you have three transactions in a couple of years yeah. with the same person. You have to not just think about sellers only, but also, you know, work on buyers. Something about that. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to have 40 conversations a day, 40 good conversations, not just hello. There's, is there enough yeah. for sale by owners in, a, in the market? 40 conversations a day? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't get enough. I, I don't see enough uh, postings on Zillow for me to call them. I, I've called. I really do think that I've called pretty much everything that you can find. Yeah, on you were Zillow. running out of uh, phone numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the 40 conversations a day is good. If I can, if I can get 40 conversations a day is good. It, it but a lot of times you're going to have to follow up. That's a lot of times you have to call back because they don't pick up and you will have to go back to the same list. Exactly. Over and over. What do you use for like managing all that? Oh, I'm old school. I use my notebook and uh, pen. Yeah, I, I should use, probably start using CRM, but um, should, we give you Lofty. You gotta use I Lofty. Know. I know it's great. Uh, it's convenient, but just like I said, I'm stubborn in some because ways. How are you gonna How are you gonna track when you spoke with somebody a month ago? I I pretty much just crawl like uh, can I go back in my notebook? That's what I did. I spoke with the guy the guy that I'm going on an appointment with. I spoke with uh -huh. him like three weeks ago. I called him. I was like, "How's it going? You you got any offers?" He's like, "Yeah, they're lowballing my property." I was like, uh, "So what what's the plan?" He was like, "I'll probably rent it out." And I'm like, "You know, would it hurt for you to try to sell it? And then if it doesn't work for a couple of weeks, uh, list it with me. And if it doesn't work, you'll rent it out." He's like, "Yeah, you know, probably we can do it." So, you, follow ups is very very important. But a lot of it, like people that are on the phone listening to you, they feel they they're screening you. Just they screen your tonality, your confidence. You know, yeah. they're listening to you. They make a judgment over the phone. You know, so it's a lot of it is also tonality and how confident you sound. Yeah, you, know? you can say the same words just differently, and it's not gonna land. No, of course, of course, you have to learn how to sound confident, and uh, I feel like it's just like you said, it's all about mindset, and you have to make sure that. I mean, obviously, we're all in this business because we're trying to make a living. Yeah. But at the same time, we also have a, an understanding that we're trying to help people. And when I call people, I, I understand that even if they don't work with me, I have this attitude that I'm just trying to help them. And mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people tell me that, you know, the, the only reason you're here on an appointment with me is because you sound different from other realtors because everybody just sounds money hungry, money greedy, and uh, they just sound like assholes. And I'm Sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you like, if you're thinking I'm calling to help, I'm calling to help. I want to see what I can do for them. I'm calling to help and see if they they need my help. And if that's your intentions, then you keep. And sometimes, sometimes when people say I'm just gonna rent it, I'm just gonna leave it as is, you know, deep inside they would love to sell. So you have to ask the question. Exactly. If offer comes today for the price that you listed. Would you would you sell it? Right. I would. Well, let's meet. Yeah. Let me show you how I can do it. You got it. Yeah, you know, you just have to, yeah, but no, but then okay, now you have to take a step back, do it from a different angle, start talking about something else. Yeah, I have so many appointments this week. Okay, when is your last appointment? I'll show up right after. Sometimes they say that, you know, mm -hmm. like I have some appointments this week, so and then after that I'm gonna make a decision. Okay, would it be possible if I just squeeze in for twenty minutes after your last appointment? When is it? 
I mean, they're going to have to say where or when mm-hmm. is it, you know? Gonna yeah. Say, uh, That's Thursday interesting. Four. I've never tried it, but it's Thursday at 4 o'clock. All right. I'll be there at 5, okay? okay. If they're still there, I'll wait outside. I'll wait in my car. They're not going to see me. Okay. And I'll be there 20 minutes. You see me. I see you. You like me. Maybe not. Yeah. At least you're going to see what I can do. And then maybe you can make the, the other guy do what I do. If yeah. you don't like my fee or something. But you have to be you have to be slower on you know uh, on the conversation. You kind of have to uh, change it up a little bit. But you can you can squeeze in as a last appointment if they have the objection like that. We just spoke with one of our agents. She was booking and uh, the seller said, um, "I have so many and I'm gonna make a decision." Okay, when's the last one? I'm gonna be right after it. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to book me for another day. I'll come. I'll squeeze in. Yeah, you can do it like that. There's different approaches, and everybody, every every person is different. Every seller is different. You know, for me, when I started, when I why I started making calls before I got into real estate, I bought things from calls. Okay. I was in trucking business. I had a moment when my insurance was expiring, and I was looking for a new insurance. I wasn't like looking, but I got a call from a guy who said, "I looks like your insurance expires. Do you need a new one?" I'm like, "I do," and he gave me a quote. It worked. I got it. And then I was like, oh, actually, this is actually even better relationship. And they got better software. They got better website. They got everything better. And I'm like, oh, great. And then I remember that. And he called me and I did business with him. And yeah. I gave him like six truck to insure. And then I was always in touch. He was always responding. It was a great guy. And then we stayed in touch after I went into real estate. We were like friends. So I remember that. And I'm like, I mean, I was happy as a customer that he called me. So. I know yeah. that if I make calls and I have good intentions, people will be happy. Yeah. And I mean, uh, y- you're right. Definitely. And you just have to have this approach that, you know, th- there are going to be people that are going to be happy to hear from you. And how can you not want to call when you know there's people that are waiting for you to call them? Yeah, they're waiting. They're right there. They're for yeah. sale. They, they they can't sell. They need help. Exactly. Come the on. You're looking at them and that's it? Yeah. You got to make a call. And, and th- you don't even have to be like... It depends. There's different people, but sometimes you can even be, you can have, give them this opportunity to say no, because the guy that I got a listing with, I told him, Ravi, um, I got to be honest with you. I've got like 15 of these appointments lined up and uh, I talk to a lot of people. I'll tell you this. There's a lot of people who just tell me, yes, they want to meet with me just to talk to me or see the, you know, comp- comp- comps or just to talk. And I'll be honest, Ravi, if you want to talk, we can talk on the phone or I can send you comps over the email. But I want to make sure that when I come see you, I want to make sure that if I'm seeing you tomorrow, if I pencil you in for tomorrow 4 p.m., I'm going to be seeing you and you will definitely consider working with me if I bring the numbers that are right and you see that I can do the job for you. And he's like, yeah, you know, we can we can talk about it. I, I want to see you. And, uh, you know, that's legit qualified appointment. Yeah, that's like strong appointment. You're going, you know, that this person will be making decisions. Yeah, because you g- g- give them an opportunity to say no. And when they see that door, sometimes they're like, OK. I have that chance. In their mind, they're like, well, I, I could have said no before, so why would I not see him right now? So they're like seeing you, and then if you're confident on an appointment with them, they're like, you know, let's do it. But uh, it's all about confidence, I think. And y- if you can fake your confidence, I'm obviously faking my confidence. I have nothing yet to back it up, but, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm just good at, I'm probably a good actor sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks so much for sharing your experience. Thanks so much for It's a valuable me. thing for for our listeners, if somebody's thinking about making calls, just do it. You know, just keep, keep, keep at it and keep pushing. It's gonna come. You know, if you make a hundred calls, you're gonna land a listing. A hundred percent. One hundred percent.